Yeah, I am fascinated by the confessionalist poet poets. Um, I think they are, uh, apart from the modernists in the early part of the 20th century, they were the last big innovative writers, uh, kind of late 50s, early 60s in there with, you know, Lowell, Snodgrass, Plath, Sexton, and then Berryman as well. And although I don't, I mean, he's somewhat confessional, but I think he's doing something even broader and, and bigger and more innovative than they were doing. But, uh, yeah, I think they were the last kind of big innovative movement in literature, at least poetry. Uh, you know, there's all these movements they teach you in school and stuff like the realists and then the kind of modernists and the, the language poets, I guess people would argue kind of like in the 80s, 70s and 80s into the 90s there. But yeah, I would say it's kind of the last big movement where everybody was trying this. And it was new at the time, too. It was considered passe to confess too much although I guess you could argue there's some confession in things like Eliot but uh yeah I think it's, it's great and I'm a huge fan of that movement and very inspired by it I think I then I have another side of it where I think that that has actually never stopped so everybody's self-absorbed now there's plenty of reasons for that but I think it's almost getting boring now to confess too much or at least to do it so directly as somebody like um, Plath and all of them were doing at the time. It's like, I think that's what's led to the memoir and autofiction crazes that we're living through now, where everybody's doing, you know, writing about themselves essentially and very little else. You know, there's the memoir and the autofiction has taken the place of actual fiction, you know, actually creating something or, or doing something different and new. So there's always downsides to movements like that. But yeah, that would be my answer in terms of a very much inspired by them, particularly Berryman and all that.